Hello, uh, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. Uh, today we're going to go back and look at this tragedy that unfolded a week ago about these five children that consume a snack ended up dying. Now, an update is that one of the six child unfortunately lost his life in hospital. Uh, condolences to those family. And this is, I said, this issue was mainly um, an issue of failure on both sides, the owners and also the authority that allowed these um, shops to exist, knowing that people that run them were illegal in South Africa and should not even be trusted to run spaza shops. If you invade a country, come there illegally uh, in a way that it's not within the law, migration law of that country. And in that way, you already demonstrated that you are not to be trusted. Why would the authority give license to these people to um, run businesses that are so high risk and um, selling consumable goods, goods that people eat? And people who are illiterate, who don't have skills, to even understand uh, the law, what it's like, you know, how to run a safe um, business like a shop that sells a uh, product um, that people are going to eat and cook at home, how to keep them, um, you know, to have just even, yeah, the expiry date. Some of these products were expired. So let's have a look now that the authorities have actually worked and started doing their job they should have done before all these kids died um you know it's it is not a that you know i don't feel comfortable now that they're reacting this way because i feel like this they should have reacted this way a while ago this shouldn't have happened and you cannot allow people to be in the country and break the law this is breaking South Africa's law. It is very clear, that law. And every business in South Africa complied to that law. That law is universal. you got to have a good manufacturing practices where you buy the products that you're going to sell. That, that manufacturer needs to have had authority stamp of approval. And these people bring these products that are from black markets. They're not products that are bought through a legitimate manufacturer. So let's listen to this Newsroom Africa reporter who is going to talk about the visit of the authority to one of these uh, shops. Let's listen in. Veronica Mahwade, who's been keeping an eye on these developments. Uh, there's some worrying things we're hearing, Veronica, and this certainly is not going to land well with the community there who have been raising this historically, and there are con concerns that something related to contaminated food might have led to the deaths of the, the children in the community. Talk to us more about what those officials are saying and, and whether there has been that opportunity to engage with the community. Well, Iman, I can tell you for now that the officials have officially closed down uh, one of these plaza shops. We are now at a second location and it's even worse than the first. When you speak about uh, the issue of contamination as well as uh, residents as well and as what they've had to say, many are quite upset in regards to the closure and this inspection as it follows. Uh, many of them saying that uh, it shouldn't just come after tragedy has to hit the community for them to feel as though a more, uh, a, a, a more proactive approach needs to be taken by officials. But I'm going to walk you through uh, just this second location. And it doesn't really need an expert to tell you just about some of the alarming conditions over here. In fact, one of the first things that were picked up, um, as I've mentioned throughout this inspection, that officials have been combing through these food items one by one, checking expiration dates. Some of them don't have them. Many of them have been rubbed off. They've also been complaining about issues of packaging, saying that some of these products are not in their original packaging. Uh, some of them don't even have barcodes, which makes it very difficult to trace this food item. Among uh, some of the other issues that were picked up just from this spaza shop alone, apart from its dilapidating roof, which has um, holes in it and gaping gaps as well, where food items are sitting directly, you can only imagine um, the kind of things that would be able to have access into the... Yeah, so the, the dilapidating roof that's there, 
you can just imagine how would they would be able to um, do a temperature control. That's non-existence. The temperature control is non-existence in there. That's a huge failure in there. And also what can come through the roof. And they meant to sell food that the public is meant to consume in the worst, you know, in the most marginalized and low income area in South Africa. That is so upsetting about it is that this community, it's the low income areas and they really don't have any other major supermarket yet, like your Woolies. So Woolies is available in South Africa, but then they have to drive a distance to go and get it. Okay, so these are shops uh, traditionally used to be owned by your mom and dad shops, and they used to be run incredibly safe. And there was never any incident that I've heard of in South Africa when I grew up there that of any child that ever consume a, a, an item from one of these shops. But however, lately with the huge influx of this league, illegal migrants, illegal people that shouldn't even be there in South Africa to actually start these shops and then having a ordering these items come from the black markets. The problem is the illegality of it and the items they they ordering on these items. They can't even trace them without a barcode or, you know, how would you trace an item without a bar, even a batch number? How? How? There's no way you can check because, and even the removing the original packaging, just the fact that you, you tamper with the original packaging of a, an item, that is in itself introduction of microbial into that product that a person is going to buy and cook for an entire family. As you have seen with these six children that have died, one child orders a snack and shared it amongst the friends and all of them have died. And all of these children are from different families, two from one family, but the rest of them from different families. So you see how massive public risk this thing is. It's huge. And you would think these authorities would have actually acted very swiftly, even when the first issues that were, arose last year about the safety, the risk to the South African public about these puzzle shops that are mainly run by these illegal migrants in South Africa. And when you people speak out, they call South African, especially South African, they call them xenophobic. I don't know um, which community would appreciate and like this. I don't know. I would like to know which community would actually think this is acceptable. This is acceptable uh, behavior that <laughs> when the community feels that they don't want these people in the community, they shouldn't be in South Africa in the first place. And they're brought about by corruption of the home affairs and the migration officials that allow these people to be in South Africa and the authority local government that have actually have not been doing their job in making sure to enforce the regulation, enforcement of the law that exists in South Africa. They are, these laws are similar to here in Australia. They're same laws. You gotta have a good manufacturing practices and where you order the item needs to be, especially for food you're gonna consume, they need to meet the country's regulatory body. Okay, if you don't oblige that, you're breaking the law. They're breaking the law by invading South Africa. They're breaking the law by starting these illegal shops that have killed so far, 11 children that are known have died as a result of this. Six last week, but this is made three other, this other children that have died, about four or five children that we can recall that have actually had food poisoning after buying items from these shops. And children are very high risk because children have very small surface area. And, you know, if they eat something that is toxic, it's been communicated, even a small amount, that wouldn't kill an adult for a child, 
it's very could be very deadly and tragic for the families so i mean just looking at that shop itself it's i don't understand this you know we're talking about families and community that are high risk already low income areas that live far away from a um, metropolitan center that many are on welfare, many of them unemployed. So really, you can imagine what is, how risky this community is. You mean, if, if you're going to bring about illegality on top of that, this is a recipe for public health disaster. This one, it's made by stupidity of the officials that have actually sat there and ignore the law of South Africa. All right, that's why it's there. I don't care what they say. It is the failure of administrative here on the high scale. So let's continue listen. This is a shop directly to food items and sources. It's also the issue of the discoloration of some food items. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, some of these food products not having barcodes or even expiry dates at all. Um, there was also quite an alarming shelf where there were actual cleaning supplies, chemical supplies sitting directly um, next to food items, being um, sauces, tomato sauces, mayonnaise as well. Um, another big one has also been the damaging of um, tin items, pilchards, beans in these tin items that have been damaged entirely. And this is the essential. So damage to the tin items. Botulium toxin. Botulium toxin. Yep. I mean, I, I, this is, it is absolutely tragic, but it was preventable. This one, it's highly preventable. The process we're seeing, this is in fact this buzzer shop owner. We're going to try to speak to him. So, um, I mean, what is happening right now? Uh, we've seen the inspection, the guys, what are they telling you to do with these food products now? Hmm? What are they telling you to do with these items? What are you doing with these items? I want to cancel this. They want to? Cancel. And where, where are you taking it? Return this. Yeah. And what are they saying? Are they going to tell you to close down this buzzer shop? Uh, I don't know. I want to open now. Yeah. And this is really has been the reaction from many of these puzzle shop owners. As you understand, this is a sting operation. Many of them caught of God um, and having to be told by officials the direct um, uh, issues and the direct, one could say, significant health risk and hazards that they are posing to the community. It really, uh, Iman, would not need a health expert when we walked into this specific spaza shop to see that this is a clear violation of even not just health and safety, um, but also just the conditions in which some of these food items are placed. Um, but again, uh, it also stems to the issue of the community. If they had not been able to see this, if this is not troubling for them, um, many of them saying that they don't mind this, many of them saying that they need these um, sort of establishments. But again, um, that issue that was raised of saying that it should not just be a compliance that is done off the back of the fact that there was tragedy within a community and that there are still investigations happening, but rather it should be a regular operation that is done to curb what is really a mushrooming crisis in terms of spaza shops, especially in townships where there is very, very uh, a lot of lack of compliance. And so what we do know officially from the um, officials here, they say that they will be taking some of the food items here that's under investigation. They will be testing them as well um, to check for any contamination as well and to also investigate where these food products are from. They've been asking the spaza shop owners as well, do you have any um, sort of proof of purchase where are you buying this from which how warehouses are you getting it from many of them have been unable so far to actually provide that documentation so they wouldn't be able to um, even provide the inventory who they order this product from because they came from the black market the the products are not safe product i don't understand why they haven't shut them down they haven't actually put a public notice to sh to actually warn the public not to go to the shops and consume anything from these shops. 
you know, there is a need for this shop. They existed. They traditionally been there for decades. Uh, you know, I'm a South African, grew up in South Africa. They traditionally been there for decades. But people used to run them. They used to be skilled, had knowledge how to run shops that are high risk like that. They weren't just illegal. These ones are illegal people that run these shops now that they brought about by the officials who are corrupt through the home affairs and whatever's going on in there. We know they're corrupt because some of them are in jail anyway. We can say they're corrupt because they're in jail as a result of this corruption that unfolded last year. So it is huge public risk. I mean, they wouldn't be able to show where they bought them because they bought them from the black markets and they got through the migration, through the ports entry into South Africa. That is where the problem came from. They weren't uh, produced in South Africa because any producer, if it's a legal manufacturer, they would comply with those. And the product itself, they'll have barcode and a manufacturer so that the official can trace it to that manufacturer and actually be able to see what is the source of contamination. Where was the source of contamination? Right now, they have a difficult task to find out where was this contamination? Where everything broke down? Like I say, like I said last time, it, it is start from the farming all the way up to manufacture where they made, control, transportation, how the condition which product are kept, and up to where you get them in the shops. Right now you can see in that shop, there's a hole in the roof, uh, temperature controls is non-existent in that shop already. So there's huge public risk in there, massive. Uh, to the officials, that was in fact the first one that we were at, and that was the reason cited by officials why it had to close. They could not verify or provide any paperwork in regards to where they are getting their supplies from. So some of the items that have been questioned here. So many things have gone wrong. And I think the thing that resonates the most, uh, Veronica, is that community members have been lamenting the quality of products that they have, that, that they purchased, uh, the ambiguity around whether something has expired or not. You're sharing with us that officials are seeing that the expiration dates either don't exist or there have been attempts made to run that, rub that off. You're hearing from, from one owner or ostensibly one of the owners there who are saying he's now going to cancel those goods. Why are they on the shelf in the first place? Why are community members having to complain about the same thing yeah. consistently, year in and year out? And this is, you know, again, this can be a tinderbox. We've seen in the past where the community has raised issues like this, and that's, re you know, re that's resulted in a great deal of anger and a great deal of violence in our communities. This is a risk that father shop owners are placing not only on their own lives, but everyone else in the community who would get, you know, get caught up in the reaction to the fact that they are being sold things that they should not be sold in the first place. Certainly, Iman, and I think one of the big things as well that has come up from just this raid alone and looking at the conditions of this puzzle shop, it also says a lot in terms of officials, counsellors even, local counsellors, who would allow community members, who would allow children, families to get their products from um, a place that is shoddy to say the least. It says also the dignity as well, apart from the health risks that have been attached to these kind of operations, these kinds of um, establishments, it's also the dignity of a community. What does it say as well of local leaders to allow family members, to allow community members to buy from places where you can clearly see that uh, this product shouldn't be sold to people. It says a lot about the way in which we also view our communities and um, their access essentially to food, their access to dignity, their access to health and safety, Iman. But um, as we continue to walk through, um, trying to make our way through some of these tight uh, 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 corridors, you can see that um, some of the food here that has been supplied uh, when we were speaking earlier to one of the residents saying that some of them, the expiration date is from at least last year already. Things that should definitely not be on the shelves. And they continue, of course, to ask this Baza shop owner to account for these items that we're looking at right now. In fact, this is um, oil, cooking oil, and essential for any South African household. Um, for any South African household. And he essentially explaining that some of these products are not right. And you'd also imagine as well, Iman, that most of the food items that you find in spaza shops 
are what we'd honestly call, you know, a food basket. We're looking at your basic items, the bread, rice, beans, things that are able to feed large families in quantities. And so when issues of contamination arise, it also then creates an issue of um, just how many people can be affected, how many households at one time can be affected by this. And so we continue to watch the officials as they raid. Um, again, a very different sense from last week when community members themselves had to take this approach. This time we're seeing it as a more law enforcement operation. It's karma, but what it does also bring is accountability. As these spaza shop owners are asked item by item, why is this expired? Why is this sitting in the shop? Why is they, um, you know, living meal directly sitting on the floor? And I can tell you in my speechless is all we're getting from the owner, not being able to account, not even being able to speak back to say, look, this is the situation. And it says really a lot in regards to where we need to be in terms of accountability for the kind of uh, conditions we allow our communities, our families to live in. Shop owners who will sell things that are year long expired. We're talking about one or two food items. It seems like there are a number of items that particular owner is removing from the shelves speaks to and demonstrates the absolute disdain that those suppliers have for the health and safety of the community, the dignity and the respect that they should have to be able to provide those services to our communities. You talked about accountability. We also need consistency, Veronica, in terms of these enforcement operations. And we can see the scale of the problem is big. Our Veronica Makwadi out and about for us in Naleli Soweto, where an enforcement campaign being driven by the Consumer Goods Council together with law enforcement, is currently underway. We'll leave it there for now and come back later. Yeah, so we'll stop here and yeah, and they're busy now starting reacting to this and they should have been doing this a while ago. This is what people do when they don't work, when they're not governed. When you don't govern and you sit around, you think people are paying you for just to be a celebrity, you, yeah, this is what the failure of this it's a failure to govern. I mean, the laws are there. You just need to enforce it. This wouldn't have happened if the laws were enforced, and you know, from entry of goods into the South African market and to people who are running these parcel shops. Uh, if the law was actually administered and enforced, you know, a lot of kids would have been saved. A lot of these children who have died would have been saved. Um, it's very unfortunate that it has led to this. And I hope the other communities that are there that still have these jobs, um, the authority in those communities that have not been impacted, they're going to start to do the job in enforcing the South African consumer law, safety and public health. All right, thank you guys for listening to this video. And I think I'll post another video in a couple of days about what I think uh, these kids consumed based on the symptoms that uh, one of their parents described, the symptoms of these kids, uh, what the first symptoms were um, in terms of, and mostly around for people awareness, raising awareness and people just to be able to know what to do uh, as well. Um, like I said before, I mean, first aid and CPR should be taught. Everyone should be encouraged to learn how to do it because it can save lives. Um, so thank you guys for all listening. If you haven't subscribed, if you're finding value in this content, please consider subscribing. I don't post as much videos. I post videos as I can. I post here when I think there's something that I want to write think about and discuss uh, to them and the ORS community and the diary as well globally. So it is, it can be anything really. I do talk about anything that's more mainly around um, business issues that people need to think about, be awareness. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for listening and please consider subscribing and press the like button. That helps for others to see this channel. And until next time, have a lovely day. Bye for now.